I don't know if they can be edited, like, if I'm, because I talk fast, too, so. We came in because we knew that there were all these normal things that were happening, and we didn't know which ones were normal and which ones weren't. It turns out they were all normal, but we didn't have the confidence to, to know that at the time and to not freak out. You need to keep learning because your child is going to keep developing and your child is going to keep changing and your child is unique and has different needs. And you as a parent are unique and have different ways of interacting with your child and different ways of evolving as a person. Um, so I think the thing that I've realized is that you really can't expect a static relationship where you read a book and you think, okay, I know everything because that is, I wish it was that easy, but it's just not. So we're not always patient. We're not always kind, as kind as we want to be, or sometimes kind at all. We're in a rush. We have a deadline to drop our children off at school, and if they miss the deadline, they have to wait until circle time's over or whatever the issue is. And when you make the mistake and you yell at your child because they took their socks off in the car and you got to school right on time and <gasps> they missed the cutoff, and you're frustrated and you yell and then you feel guilty and you go to the grocery store while they're in school and you scratch your head and you think oh I was really a jerk and then you have someone to call and they say this is normal this is life you are not a superhero go back and say to your child I'm sorry I was frustrated because now here is the benefit to your child number one you're teaching your child that you're human Number two, you're teaching your child to apologize. And number three, and most importantly, you're teaching your child about emotional intelligence. This is the feeling I had. I handled it imperfectly, but this is what it means to be frustrated. The next time I'm frustrated, I'm going to take a breath. I'm going to take a walk. I'm going to listen to my favorite song, whatever it is. And you're helping your child and yourself to be a little bit better. It's like, it's this big circle of improving everything. You improve, your child improves, instead of, like I said, ah, how could you take your socks off in the car, go to school, you leave, you're in a bad mood, your kid's in a bad mood, you pick up your kid, you guys have had it out, and then that's the end of the day. And then you go to sleep and you've worked so hard to be a good mom, and you feel like you failed and your child is sad and yuck. So really, it gives you a chance to have a good day. One of the most valuable things I learned is that we never say to our child, you're being a bad girl or you're being a good girl. We talk about choices. You're making some good choices today. You're making some bad choices. Oh, you punched your brother. You hit him in the face with the yellow flashlight. I think that was a very bad choice because the thing about choices is that in the next instant, you can make a good choice. But if you're a bad girl, that's an identity. How do you change an identity? So as a parent, the same is true for us. If you're a good parent or a bad parent, you can't change that. But if you had a good moment or a bad moment, or you made a good choice or a bad choice as a parent, you can make a good choice or a bad choice in the next instant. If you did something and it was an epic mommy fail, and believe me, we all have them, and then you turn around and say to your child, I really wanted to surprise you but it ended up being so frustrating that I yelled and I am so sorry, I was really sad. And your child says, that's okay, mommy, I understand you were sad and you get a hug. You've now taught your child emotion, apology, effort, love, all those things. So guess what, your fails is success and that is with me all the time.